how to automate things in Ableton Live like turning link and tempo follow and the metronome on and off. It's possible now via a Max for Life device or via several Max for Life devices of mine. So hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrummer.com and I created quite a few um, Max for Life devices already. And now I released three packs in total um, about accessing and automating stuff which is not natively possible to do so in Ableton Live. So you will get um, in this first pack here, which I'm going to present in this video, you will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven devices, which you can use to automate and to do some special functions here as well. For example, having the metronome always to be turned on. Okay, cool. So let's go through the devices. So for example, we have um, the link, the follow and the metronome. So the first control automate pack is um, dedicated to the top bar, the left top bar here in Ableton Live. So um, let's just um, fold down all the other ones we don't need. So we just focus on one by one. So if you have the link Ableton link button here, you want to have that activated or deactivated in certain parts of your Ableton Live set, you can automate this via MIDI clips or directly in um, arrangement view. Okay, so if you use the clip section here or the session in the session view, you need to create a clip and then you just need to navigate to the device, um, automate link and there you can actually set link to on and off and that's how easy this works and you can see the link button will be turned on and off depending on your automations here. So the same works for the arrangement view. So let's um, delete this automation or this envelope automation here and go to arrangements. So if we activate this clip or this track here, automate link and there we have the link parameter and we can set um, breakpoints here to have this happening as well. It's a little bit slow. Let's crank up the BPM and you can see now linked is being turned on and turned off. Okay, so the same works for the tempo follow device here or the tempo follow function in Ableton Live. So you have the follow button here and you can automate this via this button here. So for example, if we set a few breakpoints here, the same bomb as soon as it gets over this breakpoint, which is turning follow on, this will be turned on. And as soon as it goes over the breakpoint here, which is follow off, follow will be turned to off. Okay, so again, same in the session view section, you would need a MIDI clip and you can select the right parameter, tempo follow, and now you can set this up here. So if this clip is playing, you can see, oh, that's a bit fast here now. So you can see it's being turned on and turned off according to the automations you wrote. So the next device will be automate the metronome on, on and off. And that's like, especially when, when playing live, this is a crucial thing. It's a bit weird that Ableton didn't put that in natively. So um, turning the metronome on and off, um, let's quickly show you. Obviously the device needs to be turned on. And then you, this button here, all the parameters, same again in a MIDI clip or in an automation in um, Ableton Live will turn this on and off. Obviously this is a bit quick, so but to give you a good example, maybe if you have certain parts in your Ableton Live set where you got, well, you don't want to hear the metronome because maybe it's disturbing you, maybe it's a break and maybe you want to get into the vibe. You can have this turned off and then automatically, if you're going back into something, turn this on here as well. There's a second device for the metronome because if you're using the metronome um, all the time, the click, Ableton native click, you want this to be turned on automatically all the time. So obviously you could set up an automation here or you could use a device of mine, which is called automatic metronome always on. So um, as you can see, I can't switch the metronome off. So I'd switch it off. It turns back on automatically. So 
If you open up an Ableton Live set, always the metronome is set to off, which makes sense for most use cases like DJs, like um, if, if you, like you don't want this to be accidentally being on. But if you use Ableton Live for playing backing tracks or play alongs or whatever, um, you're setting up for the gig and you might have not um, focused enough on the sound check or you might uh, even had the time for a sound check and then you forgot to turn on your metronome. You start uh, Ableton Live and then no click is there. So this device prevents you from that situation because the metronome will be always automatically turned on. So if you if you use that one, that device, um, you load an Ableton Live set, the metronome is on per default. Okay, so the next one is automating the BPM. So obviously BPM automation in arrangement can be set um, natively via the song tempo parameter here or it can be set um, via scenes for the starting scenes to let's say 120 here. So as soon as I start the scene now, um, because there is no clip in here and the scene isn't playing, but now the tempo is changing, but it stays on that tempo for the whole scene. So you might want to slow down at the end of this song. So let's say um, we got this MIDI clip here. And let's say you want to slow down somewhere around bar five. So if we go to the automate tempo BPM and select the BPM parameter, Let's say we want to set this to 120 because that's a scene start. So I create a breakpoint. I press right click. I go to edit value and now I can type in my tempo here. So it's now on 120. And let's say from this bar here, I want to slow down to let's say 100 BPM um, for two bars and then have the new tempo here, um, the 100 BPM down below here. So I add another breakpoint, added the value. So now you can see this here. The tempo is slowing down to 100. So if we play this clip here and fast forward a little, you can hear now this is controlling the master BPM here, this parameter on the top left here via this automation. Okay, so the next device here is for controlling the global launch quantization. So the global launch quantization is per default set to one bar. So that means if um, I trigger a clip or if I trigger uh, multiple clips in a scene, all those will start on the next one according or um, relative to the transport. So if the transport is running, we can hear that via the click now. So if I now fire this clip, it will wait and start on the next one. So this is a great function, but however, you might want to change. You have different uh, use cases in your uh, live performance. And in this part, you want the set to one bar and another one you want the set to none and another one you want the set to two bars for. For, for whatever you need to automate this so if it's set to none so just that you know like if you're playing maybe different clips here and more experimental not like uh, being on the grid so now if this is set to none you can hear the clip is starting immediately uh, let's do this once more and just to show you so you got the metronome playing and at some point if you trigger this it will play and it will won't be in sync. So if you want this behavior, you want to set this to none. Okay, so you can do this automatically um, via my automate global launch quantization. So you can see if I set this to one quarter node or one bar, um, one bars, you will change this one here. So again, you can do this via Automation in clips, envelopes, one bar and maybe set this to none. So this is the way to do this in clips and you can do this as well in arrangement. Just 
automate the parameter here, um, set some breakpoints and set the values you need here. I hope um, this gives you some tools here for um, performing live, automating stuff quickly, changing tempo, switching stuff on and off, which you weren't able before to do natively in Ableton Live. So please check out this pack or other Max for Life devices of mine. Just follow the link or go over to abletondrama.com to check them out. Bye bye.